Hey guys, my name is Mike. I'm a lead HVAC installer. Uh, what you're looking at here is a little wiring diagram I drew up. Uh, the reason why I did this is because uh, the company I work for, we usually hire a lot of guys straight out of tech school. It's their first job and they struggle a little bit with the wiring sometimes. Um, I noticed a lot of these newer guys, they try to depend on this color letter matching scheme to kind of help them through, but it doesn't always work out for them. Uh, a lot of times it'll work for them at the thermostat because this color letter scheme is, you know, the red wire will go to the R terminal like you see here, white will W, yellow to, to Y, green to G, and that works out with the thermostat for them most of the time, so they learn that pretty quickly, but when it comes to wiring at the air handler, they really struggle. And one of the reasons why they struggle there is because you also have wiring coming in from other places. So you'll have wiring coming in from the condensing unit. You will have wiring coming in from float switches, humidifiers, dehumidifiers, UV lighting systems, and so on. So what ends up happening is you'll have two, three, four, sometimes more red wires all going into this air handler. And that color letter scheme that they try to use to memorize things fails them because if you use all your red wires to the R terminal everything's going to be running all the time it's HVAC chaos and that's not really how things work so what I'm going to do is I drew this little diagram up to kind of run you guys through the actual flow path of electricity where it's coming from where it's going what it's supposed to be doing when it gets there once you understand that all this kind of starts to make real sense and you can build on that. You can start learning how to wire in those accessories, the, the float switches and dehumidifiers and UV lights. And it starts to make a lot of sense. It starts to pick up. So I'll just go through this real quick, run you through it, and hopefully it'll start to come together for you guys. So what happens is it starts off from your breaker panel, your 110, 120, whatever it may be. It starts coming into the air handler. And inside your air handler, you have a transformer, you have your control board, you have your blower motor. So this is all one piece of equipment right here. All right. Your 110 comes into the transformer, steps down to 24 volts. That 24 volts is used in the control board. And it basically all starts right here at that R terminal at your air handler. Now, the R terminal is usually designated for 24 volts. Your W is usually used for heating. Y for your cooling. Green is, uh, the G is for your fan, uh, C is typically your common. Now, the flow path here, it, it always has 24 volts from your R terminal, your air handler, running up to the R terminal in your thermostat. So that red wire will always have 24 volts to it up to this point right here. Uh, your thermostat is kind of like a light switch. It turns circuits on and off. So the only difference between a thermostat and a light switch is that a light switch will just turn one circuit on and off, whereas a thermostat can actually control several different circuits for cooling, heating, fan only, or off. So when your system is off, your 24 volts kind of stops right there, and it doesn't really go anywhere. Um, sometimes you might have a thermostat that actually runs off at 24 volts instead of batteries, uh, so you will have a blue wire, for example, going for your common at your thermostat to your common and your air handler. And that's just your 24 volts that the thermostat itself runs off of. But a lot of thermostats, they run off of batteries. They don't really need that common. So it's just one red wire coming up and stops there. When you turn your thermostat into cooling mode, what happens is it'll close a circuit between your R terminal and your Y terminal in your thermostat. So this is all internal right here. You're not actually doing any of that wiring. It's all inside. Um, when that's, that circuit's closed in cooling mode, your 24 volts will travel from your Y in your thermostat to the Y terminal at your air handler. And what that does is it signals the blower motor to kick in. So your 24 volts will travel through that wire. Once it's registered here, your fan will kick in, the blower motor will kick on. But that's only half your cooling system. Uh, the other half is your condensing unit outside. And that needs low voltage there to signal it's time to start as well. So what you'll have is usually like maybe a red wire, sometimes a white wire. It doesn't really matter. Uh, as long as there's one wire going there and one wire coming back, it's going to work. It could be blue, it could be green, it would be whatever you want. I mean, it would confuse other people that would come working on a system, but it doesn't matter. But we usually use a red wire, so you'll have your yellow wire from your thermostat 
to your yellow uh, Y terminal at your hair handler. You'll also have a red wire from your condensing unit to that same Y terminal, sometimes Y1, Y2. Uh, sometimes they're separate. You got to put a jumper between them. But basically, that's your cooling right there. <clears throat> so your 24 volts will go into that Y terminal. It'll come back out through that low voltage wiring out to your condensing unit. It'll go to a contactor. Um, when your 24 volts flows through that contactor, it creates sort of like a magnet that pulls that switch in. When that switch is pulled in, it allows your 220 volts to travel through it, which powers your compressor and your fan. So the whole outdoor unit will actually start up. Right? And then in that 24 volts will travel back on a white wire to your common. And that's it. That's your entire cooling wiring right there. Um, your heating system, when your thermostat's turned to heating, uh, again, it'll close the circuit between your R terminal and your thermostat and your W terminal, uh, which is for heating. Your 24 volts will travel from that W terminal to your W terminal at the air handler and the furnace or boiler or whatever it may be will kick in. So, uh, for example, your inducer motor, if this is a furnace, your inducer motor will start, uh, the gas will fire up, the blower will kick in, your heating system will come on and everything else is out of the circuit. Your condensing unit won't start and it's just straight heating. Uh, sometimes an owner, a homeowner, will want to run just a fan just to circulate the air through the house. He doesn't want to run heating or cooling. He just wants to circulate air or she. So the when you turn, turn the thermostat to the fan only mode, it will close the circuit between the R terminal and the G terminal. Your 24 volts will travel from there to here. You 24 volts will travel through the green wire from the G terminal in your thermostat to the G terminal at your air handler and just the blower motor will kick in circulating air throughout the house. And that's it. That's your basic uh, low voltage control wiring. That's the fundamentals that you can build off of to learn everything else. So once you understand the flow path and where it's coming, where it's going, learning how to wire in something like a float switch becomes almost too easy. I mean, it, it becomes a lot more simple. So for example, um, let's say you wanted to put a float switch on a drain pan that's underneath the air handler in your attic. Uh, if you wanted to interrupt just the, let's say you had a combined cooling and heating system and you just wanted the cooling system to shut down without taking the whole heating system out with it, what you would do is you would take your uh, two wires from your float switch, doesn't matter what color they are, and you would wire one end to the Y terminal, the other end to that Y terminal, so that when you're in cooling mode, um, if that float switch is lifted up, it will break that circuit and it will never allow the 24 volts to get from the thermostat to your air handler. And that'll, that'll prevent your blower motor, your condensing unit from kicking and starting up. You can also wire it to your, your 24 volt wire. Um, so, for example, you would take your two wires from your flow switch. One end would go to the R at your air handler. The other end would go to a red wire up to your thermostat. And if that float switch lifted, break the circuit, and your 24 volts would never make it to the thermostat. So it would take everything out. Um, if you really wanted to get funky and, and mess with people, you can take this red wire from the condensing unit, hook it up to your, I don't know, let's say you hooked it up to your green wire. What would happen then is that when you put your your uh, thermostat into fan only, you're actually sending 24 volts up to that green terminal. It'll turn your blower motor on as if it were in fan only, but that 24 volts would also travel back to that red wire and then start the condensing unit. So you can put this thing to fan only mode, your whole cooling system will kick in, but when you put it to cooling mode, just your air handler will come in as if it's fan only mode. I mean, you could play with this thing however you want to, but um, once you understand it, you know how you can do things like that. And, you know, a lot of times the reason why you want to understand it in that way is because out there in the field, it's not always straightforward common sense like this. I mean, you're, there's going to be times you open up an air handler and all you see are just red and white wires everywhere. It's just a rat's nest. And if you understand how to trace it all out and what it's doing it's not going to be a big deal to you. You'll figure it out pretty quickly. Um, anything outside, if you don't understand it like that, you're going to be stumped. So 
that's the fundamentals of it. Um, there are other things that come into play here. Uh, for example, some thermostats you will have uh, not just in our terminal. You have RC and RH, one for cooling, one for heating. Usually those are put in there because sometimes you'll actually have two completely separate systems. You'll have one uh, cooling system with a transformer that creates 24 volts. And then you'll have a completely separate heating system, which also has a transformer that generates 24 volts. And you don't want to put them both together in the same terminal. So you separate them. Um, sometimes you, you know, if you're running two heating, like a combined heating and air system, like you have a furnace with an egg, uh, evaporator coil sitting on top of it with a condensing unit outside, um, and you're just running one thermostat to run that system, you'll often, you know, some thermostats will come with a jumper between that RC and that RH. Um, and basically, you could just leave that jumper in there. It doesn't matter. That jumper just turns it into one single R terminal, and you still run your heating off your W and your Y. So, uh, it, I mean, there is a lot to learn there, but I mean, the stuff I'm throwing at you here is really fundamental. And once you get that, it'll help you guys kind of take off and, and learn a lot more, a lot faster. Um, I hope that helped. If it does, let me know and good luck out there.